In this video, we're going over how to make your Zoom meetings more secure. Hi everybody, welcome to Studio Set. Thank you for watching. Like this video if it's helpful, comment down below with your thoughts on Zoom security, and subscribe for more content. I'm posting more every week. At this point, we all know exactly who Zoom is, but if you've been under a rock for the past year, Zoom has exploded onto the scene due to COVID-19. You remember Skype? Where'd they go? Zoom was originally a small company and at the beginning of the pandemic, wasn't exactly prepared for the demand required of it in order to service all the different aspects of remote work, remote school, and all, everything else that has gone remote. Unfortunately, this included its security. and It didn't have the strongest level of encryption, and the amount of controls at the start weren't the most robust. Even today, Zoom meetings are all over the news, getting hacked and terrible things being posted or shown in the middle of Zoom meetings, uh, everywhere from from schools to work uh, meetings, it's very important to know, you know where you are in control of a Zoom meeting and, and its security. So that's where this video comes in. You're in the right place. We're gonna try to make those meetings more secure. First, let's go over why Zoom meetings are getting attacked. Well, initially it was due to weak encryption and to a degree it can still be that if you did not download the 5.0 update, which updated the level of encryption that Zoom uses for its meeting. It also had to do with access credentials being stolen. Those emails that you send out with a link to join that also include the password, well, those might be shared to somebody else or someone else might be able to access those if they have access to someone's email. Another possibility could be simply poor account security. Uh, either you or another user are not properly securing their Zoom account. Luckily, we'll go through all of these today and, and come up with different ways to secure your Zoom meetings. And firstly, we're just gonna say, use a strong passphrase. There's a link right here to a video I've already made on how to improve your password. Another option is using the waiting lobby. You can enable a waiting lobby in a Zoom meeting where it will let you know if somebody's wanting to join the meeting and you can either approve or deny whether or not they're allowed to join. This is incredibly important because although almost everybody that you've sent the link to will be the only ones uh, that'll be joining, there may be one or two uh, extra people that might try to join that you did not intend uh, for them to join. So having that level of control as the meeting admin to approve or deny whether or not someone joins is important. On that note, it's also important to make sure that other users in the meeting do not have that permission if they are not trusted. For instance, if you're a teacher, you should probably be the only one with approve or deny permissions for waiting lobbies and not you know, your students granting random people permission to join meetings. Another is keeping the app up to date. This is especially true over this previous summer where Zoom kicked out its 5.0 update and that improved the level of encryption. Now, a lot of security researchers had already proven that Zoom's default encryption standard was not trustworthy, it had been broken. But with the 5.0 update, Zoom improved the level of encryption that it used, so it's important that you're downloading these different updates because they do contain important security patches. To confirm that you're using the best uh, encryption possible, go to settings, security settings, and then just kind of give it all a read through. Check and see that your encryption standard is the highest possible and check and make sure that all the other permissions look to be what you need for your meetings. Another excellent tip is using a different medium to send the Zoom meeting passwords. So remember, you can password protect individual meetings. Now, most of the time, the meeting link and the password will be sent together in a mass email. However, keeping a text chain with all the members of the meeting might be a great place to send the password. So the mass email you send out will only contain the link, but they'll need the text from you with the password in order to get in. That way, in case anybody's email has been hacked or the email is forwarded to somebody that you don't trust or don't know, 
they won't be able to get on because you've sent the password over another or second medium. And on that note, consider changing your meeting password from time to time. There's no harm in changing your meeting password as long, of course, as you're keeping all of your uh, meeting members up to date. Now, mind you, these are generally small little steps. They may add no more than 30 to 45 seconds to creating a meeting in Zoom. If that, I mean, that's a max. However, these tiny little changes can mean massive, massive impacts down the road. There are many instances that you can read online where meetings have been completely destroyed, where a school, for instance, uh, will have pornography shown uh, in front of students because somebody was able to break into the Zoom meeting or situations like that. So especially if you're a teacher and you're watching this, I I really suggest that you know you, you take these into consideration and you take the actions that you can on your end to make your Zoom meeting secure. So with that, make sure to like if this was helpful. Comment down below if you have any questions on Zoom security and subscribe for more content. I'm posting more every single week. Thank you.